All right, folks. So in today's video, we're going to talk a little bit about these TID radios. And I have a series of videos on uh, on these radios that tell the story of how I was contacted by TID Radio. They sent me this radio for review purposes. And then when I started to test it, uh, a couple of things that I noticed almost immediately, like when I transmit, it will make and transmit that sound uh, on certain frequencies. And it varies with intensity based off of contact with these contacts for the battery charger. Uh, people were saying, oh, it's just a bad antenna. And we tried different antennas and, and uh, it continued to persist. We also had problems with spurious harmonics. And some people actually reported that their batteries were getting hot and they were getting burned or uh, from heat or from RF. And I did notice some tingling sensation when I touched the contacts of the battery, but I wouldn't call it an RF burn or, or any other kind of burn for that matter. In working with TID Radio, they sent me another one that uh, is supposed to, supposedly fixed and it had the exact same problems. So a couple of weeks went by and then they sent me this third radio uh, and this one is corrected. It doesn't have the spurious emissions. It doesn't make the noise. The battery doesn't get hot or warm. I don't feel the tingly sensation. So it was a really big win. And some of the questions came up around firmware. And we talked about these two have the same firmware. We'll take a, we'll take a look at that real quick. Uh, let me go into the menu. And everybody can hopefully see this okay. So I hit the button for menu. And I believe I go down. And you can see the firmware is the ham version 230317, which would be March 17, 2023. This radio has the exact same firmware. So in the fixed radio, and I may have left it on and now the battery's dead. So give me one second. Let's check out what's going on at PCBWay.com. They're running their six annual project design contest. It's for electronic and mechanical design. The contest runs from September 1st, 2023 to January 15th, 2024. The projects that are submitted to the contest will be reviewed from the 16th of January to February 29th, with the drawings selected on March 8th, 2024. PCBWay.com is offering a bunch of great prizes for this particular contest. Let's take a look. The first place prize winner will get $1,500 cash and a $200 coupon and an open source robotic cat. You know how much we like cat videos. The second place prize will go to two winners. It's going to include a Raspberry Pi 4, $1,000 cash, and $100 coupon. The third place prize winners, three of them, will get $500 cash, a $50 coupon, and an Arduino Uno R4 with Wi-Fi. Taking a look down, we see there's a popular design prize, 10 winners, $100 cash, $200 coupon, and one $10 3D printing coupon. You also get a nice multimeter. Finally, the participation prize is a Raspberry Pi Pico 1. Go ahead and enter your project now and see how you do. Okay, we got a new battery on this one, or I should say a charged battery. And then when I go in here, uh, let's go down and take a look and you can see it says ham version 230819, which would be August 18. I'm sorry, August 2019. Now, the question came up is that if we take the newer firmware and we put it on the older radios, does that fix the issues? What I don't know is if anything structurally or electronically was changed inside the radio as part of the fix for the problems that we were having. So in today's video, what we're going to do is we're going to install the latest firmware on this particular radio and see what happens. So my contact at TID Radio sent me this link, and I'll share this link in the description below so you can play along if you choose to do so. And it's called walkietalkiesoftware.com portal index software detail ID 64HTML. And uh, it looks to me like this is a TDI radio website. And when I scroll down, you see the radio here, and this is H846S200830. So that would be August 30th. And you can download a package right here. We've already downloaded that. There's two links here that say programming tutorial video and product operation video. But if I click on these, what happens is I just get redirected to the same page. So I don't know what that means. Um, also, I think that uh, I can go over here. Let me grab my keyboard because I set it down on the floor. 
And if I back out of this, uh, was it here? You can take a look. They have other products that are listed here. This just says programming software download, but I don't know if that link goes anywhere. Um, maybe it was one more higher. Here we go. Here's some more information. And they have different drivers that you can download. And this is probably for the programming cable. And they also have different uh, radios. <clears throat> so you can see right here, this is one uh, that says TDH8, which is what this radio is. But this would be for the ham version. Then they have it for the GMRS version. And then they have the TDH8 on the lock. Um, none of these link to the link that I showed you earlier. So let's just say you were going to take a look at, um, oh, here's another one. TDH8 ham second generation. And that's, that's still not the same page that we were on. So I guess you could come in here and you could play around and you could look at uh, other firmwares if you were so inclined to do, to do so. This is IAP firmware update. And uh, again, that's still not the same one. The other thing is, is that I did not see legacy versions of the driver. I'm sorry, of the firmware. So if you wanted to roll back and you don't have a copy of that firmware, then I think you're SOL. Anyhow, let's get started with the install. Oops, one thing I forgot to show you is that when you click the download for this particular piece of software, you're prompted with a login. And the login is bushound at gmail.com and the password's one, two, three, four, five, six. And then you can just go ahead and you can click that. And we are logged in. And I believe we are downloading the uh and I believe we are downloading the software right about now. And inside this folder, you will see a series of things. <clears throat> One is a README firmware upgrade guide, then the actual bin file, which is our firmware update. And then there's an application that we need to install, the IAP firmware upgrade application. If you can install that application, then you probably have bigger problems in updating your firmware. So I'm just going to go ahead and install it off camera, but let's take a look at the README file real quick. Okay, we're taking a look at the radio, and this says, do not turn the radio on until step six. So install the firmware, then open the app. Here's the icon for the app. Connect your radio with a programming cable. Choose the corresponding port. So you can go into the software and then you can pick your port and I'll show you how to do that. It says step four, click an open file then select the firmware upgrade and we'll do that. And here they're showing a particular firmware. Press the upper part of the cable Kenwood jack through the upgrade process. I guess it's saying hold the cable in with your hand. Uh, step six, turn the radio on. And it says, what do you do if there's no progress? This is, what do you do if the upgrade fails and you can't turn the radio on again? Um, it just says to go through and do it again. Any questions, send them to support at tidradio.com. And that is it. So it is not the, uh, the most detailed uh, set of instructions, but it should be good enough to get us through it. Okay, so what I want to show here is my device manager, and you can open this by typing in next to your start button, device manager, and this will open up. And what I've done is I've highlighted down at the bottom where it says ports, COM, and LPT, and you can see two different devices there. And the cable that I'm using, and I'll show that in a second, is USB serial CH340. It's not the programming cable that TID Radio sells, but it's a multi-radio programming cable. But it's a multi-radio uh, programming cable that uh, I use quite often and should work just fine. Either way, whatever cable you use should show up under your ports and you should make sure that it's there and then notate the COM number. Mine is on COM6. All right, as promised, here is the programming cable that I use. And you can see it's got a bunch of different connectors here for different types of radios. And it's pretty handy. And... Um, it is an Abri cable. Let me see if I can hold that up there. And it just says USB programming cable walkie talkie. And uh, it generally works pretty well. One of the things is it doesn't have the FTDI or prolific chipset in here, um, which makes it very easy. I just plug it into my Windows machine and it installs the drivers and it just seems to work. 
So you do want to make sure that this cable is firmly inserted and pushed in all the way to make sure that you have a good connection. Now let's check out the software. Okay, so here's the software and uh, it installed very easy. It was easy to open up. So the first thing I want to do is I want to come over here and I want to pick, pick COM. And then you can see I have two communication ports showing and we saw from device manager that I'm using COM6. So I'm just going to hit OK. The next thing I need to do is I need to click this open file button and I need to browse to the download that we had and the, the bin file in the unzipped folder. So let me go ahead and do that. Okay, here's the folder that we unzipped and inside of that we have this and we have this and then here's our bin file and I'm just going to hit open. And now you can see that the file has opened and it is designated and we can see the file size right here. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to click Oh, I got to turn my radio on. And it turned on and it booted up OK. And I am going to set the frequency for something other than 14652 because I don't want to have that noise or anything come up because I know the radio will transmit while it's doing this. And then I'm just going to click start. <clears throat> So one thing I'll notice is, is this is taking forever. And one of the things I want to do is go in and just check my COM port. And now I notice the COM6 is not checked. So if I hit OK and I hit End, then I come back up here and I can select COM6 again. And I hit OK and I hit Start. And I check my COM and it doesn't do anything. So I'm going to hit OK. And let me just do a read from the radio, which is not in the instructions. And that does not seem to be working either. Okay, well, maybe it's the cable. All right, so we're going to use this uh, programming cable that I actually got from Retivas. It was in my bag of cables. Okay, so we have the new cable connected, the radio is turned on, and I went into the COM settings and I set it for COM7, which is my new cable. I'm going to hit OK, and then I'm going to click Start. And it looks like COM7 is unavailable once again. Okay, so that didn't work. So what I've done is I've reconnected everything back with the original cable that I was using, and I rebooted my computer. So let me go ahead and turn the radio on. And it is on, and let me go ahead and pick COM6, which is this one. I'm going to hit OK, and then I'm going to start the process. And nothing's happening. Uh, this is not looking good. So I went digging in the cable box and I have my old, <laughs> my old Balfang cable, which is a prolific chip, prolific chip. I've got another Retivas cable. I'm not going to use that. And then I've got this unbranded cable. So let me try these. And if any of these work, I'll show it. All right, we tried all those cables and none of them worked. And so one of the things that I started to notice is that if you take a look down here, this is pretty deep in the radio. And so one of the things is, is that I don't know if this cable was fully seating, even pushed all the way in, like the instructions say, you really need to push on it. I think that we had a little bit of a problem there. Now that shouldn't have been a problem with the original cable, but uh, who knows, right? So what I did is, is I did some surgery. You can see the scalpel <laughs> and uh, some rubber that we cut off of this to get a better seating in here. And uh, it does feel like it clicks a little bit better but now the problem that we have, let me get this out of here. The problem that we have is this radio appears to be dead. It is not turning on. And so I don't know if I bricked it or if it got hot or one of the things I've noticed is when the cable was in there, sometimes it looked like the radio was transmitting and maybe that had something to do with it. But uh, this doesn't look like it's working. And so everybody's going to say, Oop, your dummy, the battery is dead. So let me go ahead and take the battery off and put it on. This is the second radio they sent me. And clip that on there. And it boots up. So um, 
Uh, let me just go ahead and set this to 147000. That's the frequency I was using when I was doing the um, attempting to do the, the data transfer. And then um, let's turn the power down to low. So we have one casualty in the war so far. I'm not too worked up about it because that radio didn't really work anyway. So let's uh, let's restart and try it with this one. Okay, so we have the software open, and I'm just going to go ahead and I'm going to select my COM port, which is COM8, because this is a new cable, and I hit OK. And then I am going to take our surgically altered cable, and I'm going to plug that firmly into the radio. And it appears to be all the way in there, but I'm not 100% sure. So the radio is on, and let me see if you can see this. It looks like it's transmitting, but it shouldn't be doing that, which tells me that the cable is not seated correctly. So if I come over here and I open the file, we have it there, and I hit start. What I've noticed is, is that this ran until it timed out, and I think that's what killed the other radio, and I don't want to do that again. But uh, it appears to be a problem with this cable seating in here correctly. I'm not sure what other surgical enhancements I can do to this cable or if that would even work. All right, well, back to the drawing board. I don't want to uh, admit defeat yet. All right, folks, this is just not going to work. Uh, one of the things is that when you use this style of cable and you plug it in, and I mean, I'm pushing the heck out of this right now, and I turn the radio on, it immediately goes into transmit mode, which I don't think is what you want. And the other cable I was using has the same chipset as the TDI official cable, and uh, it didn't work either. So what I don't want to do is I don't want to brick another radio, so we're going to worry about it later. This one uh, seems to be bricked at this point in time, and I don't want to, I don't want to do that again, so... If you try it and you're successful, let me know in the comments. I'd love to hear all about it. Thanks for watching, everybody. Totally appreciate it.